Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I took a few minutes before starting here to rearrange things. Uh, I've got a, an arrangement where I keep the oldest stuff on the top shelf all the way to the left here. And then I work my way around kind of in a zigzag back and forth pattern down to the newest stuff. The newest stuff is down on the floor and I've even got a brand new bin um, which was kind of the Im impromptu result of me finishing up one of my systems yesterday which opened up the spot over here and I've been kind of putting off the rearrangement of stuff but the system I want to deal with today is my vermi bag tote which now lives up on the top shelf <laughs> and the feeding it's going to get is a, a little bit of a boring thing I've got a few days worth of coffee piled up here and I really want to get rid of it it's a slightly older bin so I wasn't planning on including the filters but they're going to get all this coffee so I'm going to put a glove on we'll get that system up here on the bench and we'll get started I just turned off the bug zapper because that thing's got a fan on it. It tries to lure the bugs nearby with the blue light and then it, uh, it's got this sort of a forced vacuum that it creates to pull the, pull the bugs in there. It's interesting. I believe these are springtails and springtails are just something I, for whatever reason, don't see all that often. And I guess what they're doing here is I could see, the reason they've congregated is because I could see a dead worm here. I don't know if that's a, a second dead worm with oddly enough a cocoon I think mixed in right in the middle of it at least that's what it looked like to me although my vision's not as good as it could be and then there's another similar little congregation over here so it seems like we've got a couple cleanup crews out here getting rid of some dead worm carcasses something I know happens you know I mean it's natural right for every being to eventually come to its end in this world but kind of a bummer when you see it first thing when you pop open your worm bin <laughs> so now i didn't really even geez i didn't i usually come down here with all kinds of stats and figures and whatnot but i don't have anything like that offhand at the present time so i'll probably end up including information about the bin's age and how many feedings it's had and everything in the description or in the title but the way I remember it is um, it is probably nearing the point in time when it's going to receive one of its last feedings before we try to gear up the system for harvest because um, I think it's already in the teens I think the, the system might have already had about 14 feedings usually I'll keep running a system until it's had about 15 16 17 feedings and then um, just I guess in the interest of not overloading the capacity of the system and then I uh, then I'll start steering it towards harvest which means no more fresh feedings and that's part of the reason they're not getting the filters either is because I don't want to see these big chunks of bedding remaining I'd, ra I'd really rather have the worms focus on all the scraps of remaining little bits of bedding everywhere within the system so one thing we didn't do last time was really check around the edges. I try to make a habit of, at least once in a while, checking the outer edges of my systems. Because in, in most systems I just dig a ditch in the middle, put the food in, and have a nice day. But especially in systems like this where we've seen in the past instances of the material in the bin getting a little bit more airflow um, than it needs along the sides here. The material will get a little bit dry, although We've noticed that's been happening less and less, and I think even during one of our most recent check-ins, we noticed that there was virtually none present, but yeah, I guess there's a few dry chunks, but certainly nothing to write home about. Stuff you can just blend right in and get it back in the game. Material is really nice out here. Here and there I find a nice large chunk of residual bedding, piece of cardboard or something like that. Lately I've been using a uh, shredder to create fairly puny chunks of bedding. But before I got that thing, a lot of my bedding was just um, as small as I can uh, tear by hand. I would just tear chunks of cardboard up by hand, not having a shredder that can handle it. Now I have a shredder that can handle it no problem, but for a while I wasn't able to create really fine bedding. Sometimes I feel like in my older systems what I might be looking at is still the remnants of some some of the old bedding 
large chunks of bedding that I used to use. Nowadays my bedding is all pretty puny, which is kind of cool. So speaking of remnants, I already found a, a banana stem and a banana peel. You might have noticed it too. And I guess that's because I, you know, I did feed down the middle. We're just starting to traverse the, the middle of the bin here. I'm just going to carry on with the inspection of the outer edges. If I spot more dry stuff, I'm going to blend it in really quick. It almost feels like the stuff's too damp, <laughs> oddly enough. I guess it being a bag and it, you know, has already demonstrated, you know, occurrences of allowing the moisture to escape. It does seem unusual that you would end up with material that might be even a little too damp. But that's kind of good in a system like this. As long as stuff doesn't start to like clump together and get disgusting. As long as everything seems to crumble and flow as it does here, I'm okay with the moisture level being pretty high. Although, you know, I guess I prob probably should treat this as a uh, an indicator of possibly an opportunity to do away with the plastic covering of this system. Maybe go with something a little bit more, uh, you know, ventilated, something that allows for a little bit of airflow, maybe a piece of paper instead. The plastic's job is really to help the material retain its moisture so they can get as much worm action as possible. But if it already seems like the material on its own has reached that ability to not lose all of its moisture in a flash, then it might be a good time to consider swapping out the plastic coverings for something else. I don't know if that, maybe the um, abundance of moisture could have also led to the presence of the springtails. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are everywhere in all systems, but that might have been one of the first times I've experienced sort of a little pocket of a whole bunch of them. i got to tell you, this material all around is so great. It's awesome. I love the way it all just crumbles and flows. I think I mixed in the majority of the damp stuff I found, and I guess here's a few leftovers, but let's see what we've got as far as actual leftovers in the feeding area. We'll see what we can do about keeping the food stuff that we located together so we can sink it down low when we're done here. You might see a little presence of flying insects here and there. I'm trying to cope with them. That includes that bug light that was running early on. And I guess really the, the strategy I'm trying to follow is get rid of whatever it is that's causing them to swarm. And I think that was part of the reason I wanted to get that system that I harvested, harvested yesterday out of commission too. Because uh, it does seem like that was the, the focal point of the, the bug presence. All right. That's cool. Kind of cool to see a cocoon every now and then. That was easy to see because it's bright in color. As they age, they get darker and darker in color, get harder to see in this in this stuff. So I hope I I, I don't know. I <laughs> I hope they enjoyed that last meal we gave them because it was a variety of really good stuff. You know, it was apple peels, banana peels, all kinds of you know mushy stuff that they probably did away with very quickly so as far as leftovers I wasn't expecting to see a whole lot in here yeah they've really done a number on the stuff I gave them last time yeah on my tracking spreadsheet I did pencil in um, kind of a, a note to future self you know to check back in here in about 10 days something I've been trying to do lately is um, give myself a, you know some sort of indicator to future me since it's often hard to remember what was going on in your systems if you got more than one what, what it was that was kind of the state of things and where you expected it to go in the near term so I've been thinking that another good thing to do as sort of a takeaway from each of these feedings is to give yourself sort of a, a future note you know to hey future you 10 days from now is when you should start thinking about giving them another feeding. And that was what I had indicated to here. And it was, even though I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me, I know it was 10 days. Um, kind of the estimate of when this um, check-in might be best done, but it's now been 14 days since we last came in here to feed. And just based on the nature of the sort of things they received last time, it's not surprising to see that there's very few leftovers of it. 
But anna peel is definitely going to take, you know, more than 14 days to break down. But most of the other stuff that we gave them, you know, other than seeing little bits and pieces of colors indicating that there's still a little scrap of food there, it's not a whole lot. Just a whole bunch of castings, a bunch of worms, a good amount of moisture too. I guess the coffee we're giving them doesn't really bring with it much moisture. So that's a good thing that there's already, you know, a good amount of it down here. And, you know, maybe it is time to start thinking about gearing this thing up for harvest at some point. I like to do that by allowing the system to dry a little bit. Kind of get the worms maybe feeling a little bit anxious for, you know, finding themselves a more damp and moist place to be. I, mean, I don't let the place dry out, become an arid desert, kills worms. I just allow the stuff to very gradually dry on its own and become something that the worms might be motivated to try to leave on their own, you know. And the gradual depletion of food down here also contributes to that too, which means at some point we might be given this thing its last feeding and sometimes in the future we might even think back to this visit and say two weeks from now we might say, you know what, let's not feed again. Let's let that last feeding of coffee be the last feeding that the system gets and we'll start gearing it up for harvest. So who knows, we've always got that option. But for now, we're going to be plopping in all the all the food I got for them, which is all this coffee and, I don't know, something I've been on lately is sort of a little kick to try to help the coffee get broken down rather than putting it in as just a big mound. I've been trying to wanting to blend it in, you know, with stuff. So maybe what we can do is just grab some of the stuff that's already down in the hole. Let's see if we can just do a whole filter here at a time. And then maybe blend in some of this stuff. I guess the nice thing about using this as food is I don't think it's going to be the sort of stuff that's going to attract passerby insects or, you know, gain their interest. I don't think there's a whole lot of odor to it. I don't think, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it's anything to worry about as opposed to maybe having like an old banana peel or who knows what, a piece of pumpkin sitting out on the surface. Those sort of things seem like they could really cause issues. But coffee, I usually don't worry about from that point of view. And man, I don't even know if I've ever fed this much coffee at one time to any bin of mine. <laughs> I think I've seen YouTube videos of worm farmers who've pretty much fed certain bins of theirs exclusively coffee and nothing but. So I'm sure they'll be fine with it. I'm just a little worried about applying so much of it without any, you know, decent amount of bedding virtually no bedding just kind of mixing it in with the existing stuff that's nearby eh, whatever let's um before we get too covered up here let's make sure we got a place to dump all this old stuff I'd prefer to have this stuff down low in the middle here and then if some of this coffee lingers out on the surface that's fine I'm not gonna worry about that so you know what Perhaps just one final little dusting <laughs> of coffee across the top. Got to get rid of it. And these guys are getting it. It's going to be hard to see if this stuff was eaten, you know, as it, I don't know, as it gets consumed, hopefully it'll be just blending in. It's really easy to spot when there's a big mound of it, but when it's, um, when it's been blended in like this, I usually don't blend it in this much, especially with the surrounding materials. A lot of times I'll blend it with bedding or food, but... This might be the first time I've applied it this way. Hopefully it works well. Hopefully I didn't create a problem. <laughs> and you know, since this stuff did go in a little bit dry, I'm thinking I'm gonna restore the coverings just the way we found them. I'm gonna go back with the plastic for just a little bit longer. And then maybe next time we'll give this uh, system a chance to air out a bit. But I think this is gonna keep working pretty well if we just leave it as is. So we'll go ahead and cover up. Hope for the best and I think we'll be okay, you know, because the coffee we just put in there didn't really bring with it hardly any moisture. Blending it all in might even result in some of the material in the bin giving its moisture to the coffee. I hope the worms like it and I guess we'll only know next time. I, th I think I'll put in like another 10 in my spreadsheet to suggest to myself that maybe 10 days from now is the best next time to check in here. I think everything will be fine in here until that time. 
So that's it for today's video. I've got a little bit of cleaning up and putting away to do, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that. Before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. And channel memberships are an option if you wanna support the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much.